God is good. Has it been good to you last whole week? Yeah, I'm happy about that and I wish you a special blessed Sabbath day today. Martin Luther, a great scholar, university educated man, university professor in Wittenberg, Germany, ordained priest, but always living with fear of future punishment. He was a scholar in his own rights as i said ordained priest but he always lived with fear of punishment until he found jesus christ in his life without jesus there is fear of punishment saint augustine a great scholar of Olden times made this statement in one of his books, The Confessions. Lord God, you have created us for your own glory, your glory, and our hearts find no rest until they rest in thee. Peace, joy, all that can be found only in Jesus Christ. Is there anyone here living with fear? suspicion doubts and not knowing what to do go run to that safe city city of refuge called jesus christ jesus christ is our city of refuge and in the city of refuge there is no fear of punishment devil has always portrayed god as a judgmentarian Someone who is waiting to punish his people. Someone who will look for the best opportunity to punish his people here. And that has been held on by some of the preachers also. Christian preachers who have uh, portrayed Christ, God, as a, as a judgmentarian. Someone who is waiting to punish. But what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say about our God? What does the Bible say about people who are in Christ Jesus? My friends, I am not talking to you today here about people who are in the church. I am not talking about people whose names are in the church record. I am not talking about people who are keeping the Sabbath, keeping the law. Last night we, we spoke about the law of God and the importance of of the law of God but I'm not talking about people who keep the law keep the Sabbath day holy pay return your tithe properly I'm talking about people who are in Christ Jesus are you in Christ Jesus that is my question today if we are, in, we are in Christ Jesus the first promise the Bible makes for us is that there will be no condemnation. You, if you are in Christ Jesus, there is no reason why you should live with fear or doubt or suspicion about your future. You are in safe hands. You are in the city of refuge. As long as you are in the city of refuge, there is no fear of condemnation. When man sinned, when man sinned, the very first thing that came upon him was fear because wages of sin is death. wages of sin is death so man when he sinned Adam and Eve when they sinned they were afraid of condemnation they thought they are doomed to perish forever they will be separated from God and they are going to die so they hid themselves I'll go come to that there is no come on let's read together this promise there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus I mean Christ if you are in Christ Jesus there is no fear of condemnation no fear of condemnation 
when Adam and Eve sinned, the Lord Jesus, the Lord came to the Garden of Eden, and He called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are thou? And what did His answer? Come on, let's let's say it together. And He said, I heard the voice in the garden and was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. When man sinned, what came up, came upon him? Fear came upon him. He was afraid. He was afraid of the punishment that is going to come. Impending punishment was on his mind. So he was afraid. He was afraid. That, let's go back to, here is a picture of uh, Adam and Eve hiding behind bushes. But let me tell you my friends, to hide from the sight of God, no bush will cover you. You go under the biggest book, uh, uh, bush under, this, under the sun. You cannot get out of the eyesight of God. They tried to hide, but that was not enough. They tried to clothe themselves with fig leaf. That was not enough. God must provide them clothes. Our, our uh, try whatever we try to cover ourselves whatever we try to clothe ourselves will not be enough in the sight of god now when uh, when they sin adam and eve sin what came upon them fear. fear came upon them they were afraid now let me read this this uh, verse for you and the angel said unto them fear. come on tell me that fear, fear not what came upon adam fear and now the angel says fear not why for behold i bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be true all people for unto you is born this day in the city of david who a savior which is christ the lord because christ is born be not afraid anymore Amen. be not afraid anymore yes. you know William Barclay explains this verse and tells me, I read, read from him, says that this word, fear not. If you translate the proper Greek, it says, you must not be afraid from hereafter. Amen. The way today in the city of David is about a savior. Because the savior is born from now on, you should not be afraid. So, if you are in Christ Jesus, if your life is hid in Christ Jesus, there is no need of fear. Amen. There is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. The angel sang to them. You know, one of my favorite preachers is Dr. Dwight Nelson. I'm sure many of you must have heard his sermons. In one of his sermons, he mentioned this incident. I'm mentioning his name because of the incident here. This is, a, he says, in the city of New York, in a secluded cemetery, he has found a grave. On the grave, there is only one word written, forgiven. No other word, nothing else is written on that the tombstone. Only one word written. What is that word? Forgiven. And when he, when he told me that, something else flooded my mind. I don't know whether the, a man was buried or a woman was buried in that grave. Older, older person or a smaller person. I don't know what was buried, who was buried. The tombstone is so polished, he says. Because of time, uh, wind, rain, and ice, all have made that tombstone very polished. But, word, but only one word is so vivid, and the word is forgiven. forgiven. Forgiven in Christ Jesus. That person, that person, whoever died there, is sleeping with the confidence that he or she is in Christ Jesus. 
in Christ Jesus. Because that person is in Christ Jesus, sleeping so comfortably without any fear of what is going to happen in the future. My friends, be in Christ Jesus. There will be no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. St. Paul worked in uh, the city of Ephesus for a long time and established a small church. And later on, when he was in the Roman prison, he wrote uh, an epistle. That epistle to Ephesians is called as the queen of all epistles. No other letter written by any human being is as good as the epistle to Ephesians, it is said. And in the book of Ephesians, he calls the people 20 times in those few chapters. Okay? In those few chapters, he has challenged the church in Ephesus to be in Christ Jesus. If you read the book, the, the, book, the very first chapter is mentioned six times. Be in Christ Jesus. Be in Christ Jesus. My friend, today I want to make the same call to all of you. Whatever your conditions may be, wherever you may be living, whatever may be your economic situation, my friends, be in Christ Jesus. Amen. Christ Jesus. He gave that challenge. Amen. You know, Ephesians, when I studied about Ephesians, I found lots of comparison between Ephesians and New York. That's why I took this uh, example today. New York is called as the financial capital of the world your fishes at that time was the financial capital of the world the banking association of the world started in the fishes the richest man here living in those days crosses lived very close to the city of Ephesus. the city was in a very advantageous position it was uh, on the road that was connecting rome and the east okay and it was on the main road, the royal main road, right on the middle of the royal main road of Rome. And because of the, its advantageous position, there was so much of trade going on. Okay? It was on the main road. Because of the main road position, there was lots of trade. With trade, what comes? Somebody tell me, with trade comes what? Money. If there is more trade, what comes? Money comes. So, Ephesus, city of Ephesus became a very rich city. If uh, money comes, what comes with that? What comes? Wealth and pleasure seeking. Okay? You go to the streets of Manhattan. I was so surprised to see that, the, that Manhattan comes to life after 10 o'clock in the night. And I was telling somebody here, our meeting, uh, meetings were over about uh, 9, 9.30 and we left the place about 10 o'clock from Manhattan in our vans. 9.30, 10 at that time. That was the time we started, we, we, we saw people eating and eating and eating. And in Manhattan, I thought people live only to eat. <laughs> I don't know about the other place. Your, your, uh, uh, this New York may be a place where people city that never, never sleeps city that never sleeps and Ephesus was one of those people yet five to six times in the night can you believe that I can't even eat one time in the night they ate five to six times a day uh, every night anyway how they yet I don't want to explain to you they ate they ate they lived pleasurably they there was an amphitheater in Ephesus this was this amphitheater was 425 feet to 220 20 feet big amphitheater that could hold about uh, 24,500 people at time and this the city population was just about 200,000 so every time they had a program 10% of the population was there okay minimum 10% of the population was in that amphitheater they had everything that they needed. 
and uh, their banking association started there money was there pleasure was there all that we see in new york was in uh, ephesus and to this church to this church paul made a challenge my friends you have a small church you are a small group but live in christ jesus not over there was the temple of artemis in ephesus one of the seven wonders of the then known world temple of artemis and in the temple of artemis they worshiped the goddess of diana goddess diana in the temple temple of uh, when diana worship was a very debased worship not a good one she was a fertility god and people worshiped her in a very bad way in the temple of artemis so listen now they were the church in ephesus was a very small church they were surrounded with all the evil influences but paul says live in christ jesus and because they lived in christ jesus because that little group lived in christ jesus and lived a life of new creature they had become they had come into jesus christ and they had become new creatures therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creature because they were in they were they had become new creatures something that unbelievable took place in the temple worship was very great and they had what is known as magics they taught magic in uh, ephesus they had they had printed big big volumes of books of magic in uh, ephesus all evil influences were there but paul said live in christ jesus and they lived in christ jesus and they lived a life of new creature something dramatic took place within a short period of time my friends the the temple of artemis was broken down and it is said the influence of christian church was instrumental in uh, bringing down this great edifice a small group of people they lived in christ jesus the artemis temple was broken down and when that was broken down they have found a new christian church in ephesus which was uh, broken down and they have found that columns that were in the tem temple of artemis have been brought to construct this christian church you understand what i'm saying christian influence had broken the worship of artemis you are in a new ephesus live in christ jesus and your influence is going to be great my friends my friends your influence is going to be great in the city of new york be not afraid of future punishment because jesus christ has taken all the punishment upon himself we have no fear of condemnation because the savior was born on this earth we have no fear of condemnation because the savior carried that cross to the Cal calvary to calvary we have no condemnation because the savior's face the father's face was hid from jesus christ we have no fear of condemnation because the savior died on the cross we have no fear of condemnation because the savior rose again we have no fear of condemnation live in jesus christ you have no fear of condemnation future life is secure in the hand of jesus christ we will be in the city of refuge if we are in jesus christ live happy life you want to live a happy peaceful fearless life come into the savior Come into the city. And then if you are in Jesus Christ, there is a second blessing. That is that we become what? Children of God. You know, to be born in a big family is a big blessing. I wish I was, I was born in maybe Jimmy Carter's family or uh, when I was a small boy, Jimmy Carter was your president. 
I used to be Sahib. I was born in Jimmy Carter's family as his son. You know, to be born in a big family is a blessing. But what is God saying here? If you are in Christ Jesus, you are whose children, whose child? God said, you become the child of the ruler of the universe. All the universe have been created by him. The all powerful, all knowing, all wise creator says, you will become my child if you are in Christ Jesus. If you are in Christ Jesus. For he have not received the spirit of bondage. Again, we spoke about the bondage yesterday, right? Again, to fear. None. We need not fear. But you have received a spirit of what? Adoption. Whereby we cry, what? Abba, Father. What a privilege it is to call the creator of the universe as my father. As my Abba. It's, like it's not even father. It is daddy, actually. Okay. It, uh, there's a difference between father and daddy. Isn't that right? When you have a uh, lot of... Uh, when, uh, uh, good relationship with your father you call the father as what daddy and, and live very close to him when you say father there is a little bit of separation okay that's what I learned from my children my children I told them I tell them to call me father they say no 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 you are my daddy they hang around on my shoulders okay whereby we cry Abba father one more verse and because ye are sons, God has sent from sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying what? Abba, Father, what a blessing we have. You know, sometime back I was watching a, a TV program in India, in which our Prime Minister, a lovely person, Dr. Manmohan Singh was uh, giving out police bravery awards a lot of uh, officers came and uh, briskly they walked and came and stood uh, in front of him and he gave the bravery awards and they saluted and went i watched one man tall well-built man young he briskly walked and walked and came and stood before him and dr manmohan singh gave the award he didn't salute i was wondering what's happening to this man he's not even saluting the prime minister then dr manmohan singh looked at him and hugged him i understand that was his son in law what a what a privilege to be the son in law of the prime minister and receiving an award from him my friends, we have better than that. Amen. We are what? Sons of God, children of God. Right. Slides into the, walking into the chamber of God and saying, Abba, Father. I, rem I remember, re remember reading a story of a Roman uh, emperor. He was returning from one of his battles, victorious battles. As he was coming, People were uh, lining on either side of the roads and there was great tribulation everywhere. And uh, his chariot was coming. All of a sudden, a very small little fellow somehow passed all the, these crowds and walked straight into the emperor's chariot. As he was trying to go there, a uh, soldier stopped him and said, don't try to stop the entourage of the empire, emperor. Do you know who is sitting there? That is the emperor of Rome. And this little boy looked at him and said, Come on, out. For you, he is the emperor. For me, he is my father. He ran up, stopped the chariot, jumped into the chariot and sat beside the father. My friend, we have the same privilege with the creator of the universe. Creator of the universe. Somebody said once, why is the Bible always talking about sons and not daughters? My friends, I have found a verse in the Bible that says sons and daughters. Come on, let's read this. Let's read together. And will be a father unto you. God says, I'll be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons 
and daughters, girls, be happy about it. Okay? Girls and ladies, be happy about it. We are called the sons and what? Daughters, Saital, who? Lord Almighty, Lord Almighty. You know, when we are adopted into a family, we get all the privileges of that family, right? Here is a man by the name Lucius Domitius Ahino Barbus. Very difficult name to pronounce. Lucius Domitius Ahino Barbus. This man's parents were working in the, in the palace of Emperor Caligula, Rome, Roman Emperor Caligula. Both were employees of the palace. I don't know for whatever reason, Emperor Caligula got angry with that family and exiled them. Father and mother were exiled to another nation, another country. This Lucius became an orphan like because father and mother were exiled. So he went and joined with his one of his aunts, Domitia Lepidia. Okay, you don't need to learn all those names. I have taken a number of days to get this, get those names into my into my head. Domitia Lepidia. She went and joined with her and grew up under the protection of that aunt. Then uh, Emperor Caligula was assassinated. Later on, Claudius Caesar became the emperor of Rome. Immediately, I don't know what went, uh, went on his mind, he called his mother back, Agrippina. He called his mother Agrippina back from the exile and married her and adopted this man. Okay, Emperor, emperor Claudius Caesar adopted this Ahino Barbus. Emperor Claudius had a son, Britannicus. He was three years younger to him. Because he, the Britannicus was three years younger to him, when Claudius Caesar died, the adopted son became the next emperor. And we know his name, Emperor Nero. Now you understand this Ahino Barbus and Cla what is the Domitius and Lucius and all that. Because he was three years older to him, he became the emperor, a man who came from outside. A man who was not even connected with the royalty. A man who, was, who did not come in the lineage of the Caesars became the Caesar of Rome because he was adopted. My friends, God has promised to adopt us into his family. His family. And we will have all the privileges that heaven can offer to each one of us. If you are in Christ Jesus, you will become sons and daughters of Jesus, the God. And we will have all the privileges that God can offer to us. For through him, we have both what? Access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore, you are no more what? Strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God very soon my friends we are going to meet the unfallen beings of other worlds very very soon we are going to call them brother and sister very soon we are going to be with the angels unfallen the angels of God and we are going to call them brother our angel, the angels unfallen angels that have been helping us in the world today protecting us from harm and danger we will meet them you know i personally i personally want to meet my my guardian angel i don't know who my guardian angel is but i know he is there because of him i am alive till today the the accidents that i have gone through the, the near death experiences that I have gone through, I would have perished had it not been, had it not been because of my guardian angel. So when I go back to go to heaven, I will tell, come on, brother. I will not call him guardian angel anymore. Come on, brother. Show me your hand. Show me your hand. I want to see the hits that you took on behalf of me. All the hits. That should have fallen on my head and broken my head. He has taken in his hand. He has put his hand before me. And he has taken all the punches. I want to see his hand. 
my friend we will meet all the angels all the angels in god's kingdom because god has adopted us into his family if you are in christ jesus if you are in christ jesus you are children of god what a privilege that is what a privilege that is let your light therefore if you are in christ jesus if you become the sons and daughters of god and if you are adopted into the family of god and calling all the saints of all the universe brothers and sisters do what let your light so shine before men let people of new york see your light that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven my friends i want you to take an inventory of your life today and see whether you are in christ or outside of christ there is every possibility to be in the church worshiping god in the church and still be outside of jesus christ i don't want any one of you seated here to be living outside of jesus christ so take an inventory take an inventory with the help of the holy spirit to see whether you are living in christ jesus or outside of jesus christ that is very important that is very important therefore if you are god children if you are in christ jesus if you are uh, if you are prepared to call all the angels brothers if you are prepared to call all the unfallen beings as, as your brothers and sisters do what therefore eat and drink or whatsoever you do do all to the glory of god let the glory of god be your primary motive what for do we live we live glorify to glorify our god you know in uh, a place called fernandina islands a missionary went to work and when he went there the the local people were very very what shall i say what cruel people very difficult to handle so he did not preach about christ he only planted a coco garden and employed people to work in the coco garden there are many people working there and many of them saw the life of this missionary and they were attracted to jesus christ at that time one day an young man heavily built young man came dancing to his office the way he came this missionary thought what is this fellow coming for he was whistling and dancing and all that he was heavily built and a very carefree man and he said i want to work in your coco garden and uh, the missionary said first of all you stop dancing <laughs> if you want to work in my coco garden you better stop dancing he stopped for a while he said i want to work in your coco garden the missionary said okay you can join come and join he, he gave a date and the moment he gave that appointment he danced again whistled danced and went and some other missionaries who were living a little away from uh, this coco garden called this missionary and said we come to know a fellow by name camano came to seek appointment from you employment from you and the man said yes that that guy the heavily built man yeah he seemed to be very enjoying uh, life and the other missionary said yes he li he likes to enjoy his life because he has killed so many people he is a big murderer be careful with him be careful with him they advised this missionary to be careful with this man in spite of that this missionary appointed him in the coco garden times times by time went on on and the man the dancer that camano his name was camano camano was attracted to the missionary his lifestyle slowly changed his lifestyle slowly changed 
Where before long, one day he came to this missionary and said, give me a Bible. I want to read the Bible. The missionary gave him a Bible. Now there is no more dance. He is not dancing when he came. He was not dancing when he left. He had become a different person. After a short while, he came uh, to the missionary and said, I have read the Bible. And I am accepting Jesus as my Savior. And the missionary said, I want to test your Bible knowledge. So he called him to his, office, uh, to his house, sat him near him and uh, said, he asked a number of questions about the scriptures. And Kamano for sure had read the Bible and memorized most of, many of the parts of the Bible. Very tough man. And this missionary knew this boy, this young man was living in Christ Jesus. And then he said, I want to be baptized. And the missionary said, okay, I will baptize you on such and such date. He gave a date. And this man, Camino, went to buy a new dress for him for baptism. He bought a nice white dress for his baptism day and stored it in his room. And he had some money with him. All the money that he had saved for, from his labor, he kept near the, the, that new dress. In the evening, he went to see his room had been broken. His dress had been stolen. His money had been stolen. And he knew who it was. If not for the Bible, he would have killed that fellow. His name was Barnabas. Barnabas would have been killed. But humanly, he became very angry. He did not know what to do. He bit his lips so hard, he started bleeding. Started bleeding. This became a kind of a wound and kept bleeding for a long time because of the bite he gave to control his anger. And he prayed, Lord Jesus, help me to be out of this anger. He came out of the anger. Next day, while he was walking in the cocoa garden, he had a big shout and cry. And Camano ran to the place from where the noise came. There he found Barnabas fallen down. He had been bitten by something called black African mamba. I don't know what kind of uh, snake that is. That's what I read. It may be king cobra. Most poisonous one? Okay, most poisonous, poisonous one. Black African mamba. He had been bitten by that. And he had fallen down. Now, Camano thought for a while. He stole my dress, let him die. Then the Lord spoke to him and said, Kemono, you are no more the old man. You are a child of God. Do to this man what I would have done to him. So he knelt down, bit on that place that the snake had bitten him, and sucked the blood. Sucked the blood. Made a little wound and sucked the blood. Within a short while, within a short while, that Barnabas stood up. And Camano said, the Lord Jesus Christ lives within me. I am no more the same. And fainted and fell down. That poison that was in Barnabas went through the wound that he had on his lips. My friends, God has accepted us if we are in Christ Jesus as his children, sons and daughters of God. And he expects us to live like sons and daughters of God. We must, in our actions, in our words, in all that we say, in all that we do, in all the places that we go, we must exhibit the character of God in our life because we are the children of God. 
Then third, blessing and a promise for all those who are in Christ Jesus. What is waiting? Great glory is awaiting us. You know, God's children in the world, while we live on this world today, may be called to suffer persecution. Am I right or not? Very often we may be called to suffer persecution, difficulties and painful situations. We may not be as rich as the other man who is not even obeying God's commandments. This has been a question for many people in the Bible, Bible time also. You read the Psalm uh, 73. Asap had the question. Malachi had the question. What am I gaining? I am not getting anything in the world today. I am your child. I, you have, I, am, I have accepted you in my heart. But there is nothing special to me. Look at the other man. A wicked man. Wicked man is growing like a green tree, the Bible says. Green like a, it's flourishing. We may not flourish in the world today. We may have difficulties. Look at the Bible. What, what does it say? For I reckon that the suffering of this recent time are not worthy to be compared. Come on, let's read now. Compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. There is a glory that is waiting for us. We may be called to suffer. We may have problems in this season. But a great glory is awaiting us. If you are in Christ Jesus, that glory will be for you. For you. Let's read what the Bible has about the glory. Seven, seven blessings that the book of Revelation wants to give to us. If you are in Christ, to him that overcometh, will I give what? Let's read together. Loud. Eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. What did Adam and Eve lose? The tree of life. Okay. Now, if you are in Christ Jesus, if I live a life in Christ Jesus, I have a promise in the scriptures that I will have the authority to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. That's Revelation 2, 7. And then comes, he that overcometh shall not be hurt by the second death there is a second death that is coming the eternal death eternal damnation eternal fire is coming on people who are not living in jesus christ but god says if you live in jesus christ if you overcome this world's difficulties you will not be hurt by the second death thirdly to him that overcometh will i give to eat of the hidden manna i have you know I was, uh, I was talking to many people. I was talking to our, our sister uh, uh, Jim the other day. The, the taste of manna. How it would have been? The Bible says it was like a honey. It was like olive, uh, new olive oil. It was the food of uh, the angels. It was the food of heaven. All this have been said. I don't need to worry about it. Very soon I'm going to get what? I am going to have manna myself very soon to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna you know in the in the sanctuary of God in the tabernacle inside the most holy place a pot that contained manna was kept I wish that somebody preserved it even now for us to taste but that is gone we don't know where it went but it will be revealed again when Christ comes the second time. We will see the ark of God. Amen. We will see the commandments of God inside the ark. And we will have the privilege of eating the hidden manna. And then comes, I will give power over the nations. And I will give him the morning star. If you are, if you are really desperate to have some power over somebody. Okay. There are a lot of people who want to have power over others. Okay? To rule over others. Don't worry about it. You are going to have power over the nations. And you will have the morning star. Then you will, have, you will be clothed with in white raiment. White raiment. And then finally, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. I will grant to, grant to sit with me on my throne. What a privilege is going to be ours. 
our our uh, ruler of the universe is going to keep you on the throne on his throne we will sit on the throne of the creator of the universe what a blessing that is going to come so my friends if you are living in christ and still encountering problems in your life don't worry about it because a great glory is awaiting you if you are living in christ and having sickness that that is eating away your body don't worry about it you are going to have a new body if you have if you are living in christ and not able to clothe yourself in the way that you want to don't worry about it you are going to have a white raiment you are going to have you know lot of people in india want to wear gold ornaments if they don't get they feel very sad i tell them don't worry about it you get to heaven live in christ jesus get to heaven you will have gold all over in the in the kingdom of god in heaven you will see that on the street you will walk on the oh, my friends it is going to be a blessing my lord has given us promises after promises that we are going to have in the kingdom of god Saint Cyril, one of the saints of the early Christian history, became a Christian when he was very small. As a young boy, he became a Christian. His father was a pagan man, pagan man, living in Roman Empire. He beat him. beat him up and said have nothing to do with jesus christ but cyril said you can only beat my body you cannot beat the jesus christ who is in my heart what a say you can't do anything with the jesus that i have in my heart you can beat me you can do anything you can't take him out he is in my heart in my heart he threw him out of the house he said he was a, he came from a very rich family very rich family he said father said i will not give you a penny from my properties and then he disowned him you know what is disowning wrote in uh, stamp paper that this guy is no more my son he threw him out but cyril was happy as he was saying the lord jesus is in my heart i have nothing to fear and he brought number of other young men of his age to christ and because of that he was arrested he was arrested he was brought before the tribunal when he was brought before the tribunal the judge looked at the boy and said you are an young man at that time he didn't look like this this is from his old age time he said man you are a young fellow i want to let you go i want to show mercy on you do want to you don't have to do anything just tell me that you will go and stay with your father give me the promise that you will go back to your mansion you will go back to your estate just give me that promise i will let you free you know cyril said your honor going back to my estates going back to my father's palace does not concern me at all because i am already living in a new palace new palace a palace is awaiting where i will reach very soon which is much grander than my father's palace because christ jesus lives in me my friends i want to give a challenge tonight today are you living in christ jesus if you live in christ jesus nothing you need to fear nothing in the world should concern you because a savior has died for you there is no condemnation to them that are in christ jesus if you are in christ jesus you become sons and daughters of the god and finally 
if you live in Christ Jesus very soon very soon sooner than we think great glory is awaiting you God bless you today to live in Christ Jesus and make all the promises your own God bless you